So one concept that you need to understand in load structure is a concept referred to as a formal charge. First off, it's just discussing what a formal charge is. A formal charge is basically a hypothetical charge that you can calculate for any atom in a Lewis structure. There are two important uses. One is in this class, once we calculate formal charges for uh, all the atoms in a particular molecule, and we can do this for all the molecules you draw, Lewis structure itself, you can then compare all these Lewis structures and decide which one would be the one that has the best quality. And we'll talk about that very soon. The second uh, use of formal charge is that it allows us to predict reactivity of, an, of atoms in a particular molecule that you draw Lewis structure off. And this is really something you will do more in organic chemistry, and we wouldn't do any of this in this class. But it becomes very useful because an atom that has, for example, a positive charge is called electron deficient because it uh, has a positive charge. So it would want to react with another atom that has a negative charge on it. So that's how you can use it to predict reactivity. So this is how we can calculate formal charge for any atom. The way you would do it is you're going to take the number of valence electron in the free atom and then you're going to subtract from it the number of bonding electrons divided by two for that atom in the structure that you draw. And then you're going to then subtract the number of non-bonding electron for that atom as well in the structure you draw. Okay? Let's do a quick example here. This is taken from your lecture slide. So the question in this example is you're asked to draw all resonance structures for NO3- and BrO3-. But right now, we're just going to calculate formal charges with this question. And then uh, in the next video, we can then continue to draw these uh, resonance structures and solve the problem. So for NO3 minus, the first thing in, uh, to calculate formal charges is you're going to need to draw one Lewis structure. So you're just going to go ahead and do the same calculation you've been doing, which is 5 here for the nitrogen for valence electron you have 18 for oxygen and then you have one more so that gives you 24 electrons if you were to draw the Lewis structure this would be one way to draw the structure and you can see that you used up all your electrons already if you count you've used up 20 your nitrogen is not octet and nitrogen has to have an octet remember it's not any it's not an atom that can violate the octet rule so what you're going to do is you're going to take this and then move it here, let's say. And, of course, the structure that you'll get as a result of it is something that looks like that. Okay. For those of you who are careful, you would already see that you can draw other structures, other resonance structures, in fact, by moving the electron maybe here uh, instead of the yellow one, or maybe you can use this red one instead. But we'll discuss that in a little bit. Okay. First off, you're just going to have this structure for the ion, and in this case, everybody satisfied the octet rule. The question then is, how do you calculate the formal charge? I'll show you in the next slide. Okay, so I'm just going to label this. Let me call this oxygen number one, oxygen number two, oxygen number three, and then we have the nitrogen. If you're talking about oxygen number one, what you're going to do is first use the formula that we discussed earlier, which was that you're going to take the number of valence electron in a free oxygen. If you remember, oxygen is group 6A, so that's going to be 6 electrons, right? And then you're going to take half of the number of electrons that are in bonding for this particular oxygen. If you look here, the only uh, bond this oxygen has is this bond right here. So it has two electrons in that bond. In other words, half of that is one. So in other words, it's 2 over 2 because you have two of them in the bonding, right? Two electrons in bonding. Lastly, you need to calculate the number of electrons that are non-bonding. So then you just calculate all the lone pair electrons. Okay, so it's the electrons that you're calculating, not the pair of electrons. So you're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That would mean you have 6 electrons total non-bonding. If you solve this, you get the value negative 1. And so the formal charge for that oxygen, number one, is negative one. So for oxygen number two, we have the same situation. It's the valence of the free oxygen. It's also six electron. And then we subtract. We get one bond, which means two electrons in the one bond. And then so it's two, but then it's divided by two. 
And then lastly, we look at the number of lone pair electrons, and there's also six in this case. So again, this one is also negative one. Let's look at oxygen number three. You also have six electrons in the uh, free atom, right? Free oxygen atom, you always have six electrons. And then now the number of bonding electrons is a little bit different here. You have two bonds, which means there are four electrons. So then it's four divided by two. And then if you count the number of lone pair electrons, there's one, two, and three, four right here. So you have four as opposed to six like the other two. So then if you solve this, um, what you get is zero. So that's the formal charge of that oxygen. And then lastly, we go with the nitrogen. Nitrogen is the free atom has a valence of five. Remember, it's group 5A. And then if you look around here, you see that you have one bond, two bonds, three and four, right? So a total of four bonds, which means eight electrons. So then it's eight divided by two, okay? And then what about lone pair electrons? If you look around the nitrogen, there's no lone pair electrons, so that's zero. So then this becomes plus one, okay? So that's how you calculate formal charge. So in this case, you see that you have negative 1, negative 1, 0, and plus 1 for the oxygen and the nitrogen. So I just redrew this here and indicate the formal charge on each of the atom. Now, one thing to note about formal charges is a property of formal charges. If you calculate this correctly, the sum of all the formal charges should equal the charge of the species itself. In this case, our total charge is negative 1. So when you add all of these numbers together, you're supposed to get negative 1. And, of course, that's what you see here. If you were to add negative 1, plus 1, 0, and negative 1, you get negative 1 as your answer. So I'll do this one more time with another molecule so you get a better feel for how to calculate formal charge. The next molecule we need to work with is BrO3 minus a bromate ion. So if you uh, add this up together, you have 7 for the valence electron of Br. And then you have 3 times 6 for oxygen, and you have one more, so you have a total of 26 electron. Br is central atom, so it would look something like that. Let's satisfy the octet rule for oxygen first. So you get 4 around each oxygen, so 4 times 3 is 12, that means 24 electron, and then you can put one more around the Br, give it an octet, okay? That would be a structure that you can draw for this ion, whether it's uh, reasonable or not. We'll discuss this in the next video. If you were to want to calculate formal charges, I'm going to do this rather quickly now. Let's do it for this oxygen on the left side. You have six in the free atom, the valence in the free atom. Subtract that from half of the bonding pair, which is just two over two, so it's one, right? Because only one bond, which is this bond right here, okay? and then subtract it from six electrons, which is the number of lone pair electrons. So then this oxygen would have a formal charge of negative one. You can do the same for the second oxygen at the bottom. You're going to get the same formal charge. You're going to get six minus one minus six, so it's negative one as well. And then for this one on the right side, it's the same. You go six, one minus six, also negative one. Now, what about the bromine? Well, bromine has seven in the valence, in the free atom, and then minus half of the bonding pair electrons. There's six electrons total. Six over two is three, so it's just three minus two electrons. So then it is plus two. Two electrons being in the lone pair electrons, okay? So you you notice what I said earlier. If you're drawing, If you're doing this correctly, when you add all the formal charges together, it should equal to the overall charge. In this case, the overall charge is negative one. So if we were to add all the formal charges, we have plus two, negative one, negative one, negative one. So two minus three is negative one. Okay, so then we got the correct drawing. Let me do one more example here. Let's say we have this molecule XeF4. If you do valence here, you have eight uh, for the noble gas, and then you have four times seven for the fluorine. So then you get 28 plus 8 is 36 electron. Xe is our central atom in this case. And then remember that F has to satisfy the octet rule. And then if you count, you already used up 4 times 4, which is 16 times 2, 32 electrons. So you need 
All right, because you have 36, two more pairs, so that has to go to xenone. And clearly, in this case, xenone violates the octet rule, but it's okay because xenone is located beyond the third period, so you can do that. So if you look, each fluorine is, um, you can calculate, remember, the free atom has seven valence electron, and then you subtract from one bond here, so this two pair, two over two is one, so you subtract from one, and then lastly, you subtract again from six, right? So then that gives you fluorine charge of zero. And if you look around all the other fluorines, they all have that same pattern, so they're all going to be zero formal charges. And if you look at the xenon, it's going to be eight in the free atom. And then you got four bonds, right? So that's really four of the bonding. And then you get four more in the lone pair electron. So then the xenon also has a charge of zero, okay? So this is really give you hopefully a good example of what formal charges are and how to calculate them. We will talk about how to use them in differentiating resonance structures in the next video.